all due respect to Neil deGrasse Tyson, he said some things that are very true. One, he said that, okay, the golden age of Islam was the golden age of science. We've never had any uh, advancements like we've had in that period. Why? Well, in the Quran, it tells you, look, you want to know about God? Go look at the signs of God in nature. It tells you that. Go out there and look inside and look outside. And study and go and find all the answers that God, all the mysteries that God has waiting for you. So the Muslims were very uh, pro-science. They were very pro-knowledge, very pro-logic. In the, in the Quran, it says hundreds of times, reason. Reason is superior to uh, blind faith, so to speak. So we had a, a, a boom of intellectualism. An uh, incredible broom, boom. Now, all of science has a bedrock in Arabic. Not all of it. A lot of science has a bedrock in uh, Arabic philosophy. Now, how do we know this? Well, the, the scientific method itself was designed by Hassan ibn Haytham. People don't know this. People attribute it to uh, Francis Bacon. Francis Bacon was 300 years later. Um, uh, Hassan ibn Haytham was a Muslim scholar who developed the the scientific method as we have it today. Now, of course, Aristotle uh, contributed very much, but it wasn't the scientific method we have today. It was, that was the difference between deduction and induction. In, in teaching us uh, the difference between induction and induction. But Neil deGrasse Tyson later goes on to say, that, look, the Arabs, the Muslims, they were at this pinnacle of science. They reached the top of the top. They made the most advances. Math, biology, uh, medicine, uh, navigation, all these these incredible advancements. The first university in history is the, I, 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 in the Islamic world. Anybody who was an intellectual had to travel to the Islamic world, the University of Baghdad, the House of Knowledge, to study. What happened? Well, <clears throat> one thing he doesn't get correct exactly is that it's the Mongols that came and chopped down the Islamic, uh, the Islamic world. The Mongols, Hulagu Khan, not Genghis Khan, not Genghis Khan, Hulagu, his, ne his grandson, came and uh, burnt the libraries of the Muslims. So all these incredible books that we never had passed down to us, all this incredible knowledge, lost. And for 80 years, there was a massive onslaught on Muslim people. The descriptions of the onslaught by the Mongols onto the Muslims is horrendous. Okay? It's, it's as bad as you can imagine. But within that 80 years, the Mongols also then converted to Islam. So instead of spreading from town to town, building mountains of skulls, they were spreading, now going town to town, opening up mosques. The Muslims went away from Islam, and then they conquered them, and then Islam no, no, conquered the, the, the Mongols. The, Mongo the Mongols conquered is the Islamic Golden Age. They cut down the Islamic Golden Age. And uh, the Muslims at that time have gone away from Islam. Not no, necessarily. They were very Muslim. They were mm -hmm. very, very Muslim. They were just, they were still very religious, just very scientific, mathematically oriented, logically oriented, f uh, oriented towards philosophy. They wrote countless great books. Those books were burned by the Mongols. And then Neil deGrasse Tyson in the video is saying, okay, well, how come they never rose back up? How come the Mongols never rose, uh, excuse me, how come the Muslims never rose back up to greatness? He, well, he blamed that on one particular individual. He said, oh, it's because of Imam Ghazali. Imam Ghazali said, I'm abbreviating, math is from the devil. So this is a false statement. False statement, totally okay. false. So like that's, one, that's one, one number one correction. That is right that there. is the central theme of his of his speech, right? He's saying, look, the Muslim world has been cut at the kneecaps, as he says, but because of Imam Ghazali. Imam Ghazali reformed Islam and told the Muslims, math is from the devil. Don't do math. Don't think. Don't be logical. But how can he be, How can he be wrong? He's got 12, 12 PhDs. Yeah, I said. believe me, he's wrong because I'll tell you why he's wrong because he's never read the works of Imam Ghazali, and I say this with all due respect because if you read even the the if you read the works of Imam Ghazali superficially, you would know that he was a lover of logic, a lover of wisdom, a, lo a lover of knowledge and science. In fact, in his confessions, he says that, because he has such a trust in logic, he says, nobody could ever convince me that seven is less than three or that three is greater than seven because that would be illogical. The definition of three entails that it's less than seven. He says, suppose a man were to walk up to me with a staff and turn the staff into snake, into a snake. And that was his proof that three is greater than seven. He says, I still wouldn't believe him. I'd be astonished that he could turn a staff into a snake. Mm -hmm. But I still wouldn't believe the logical inconsistency that three is greater than seven or that seven is less than three. That's how much he had a, of a regard for mathematics. Because 
Neil deGrasse Tyson was trying to, s- it seemed like he was trying to say, point to, that Imam Ghazali believed rather in superstition than mathematics. He thought the mathematics is from the devil and these superstitions are from God. Where it's the complete opposite. Imam Ghazali was uh, incredibly adamant about this, that logic and reason and science come first. And every type of uh, illusion you might have is ungodly or un- un- untrue. That if somebody were to turn a staff into a snake, it, if they use that as proof against logic, we would have to reject them. So superstition takes a back seat to logic and science. So uh, all due respect to Neil deGrasse Tyson, he's tried to answer a very complex question. Scholars today, if you ask them, why hasn't the Islamic world risen again? The answer is very complicated and nobody can point to one thing. That's the, the general consensus. Nobody can point to one reason why. But in my opinion, look, I'm here to tell you, I think the Muslim world now has to return back to a level, to a place where we put intellectualism and science and the deen, and we find a way to unify them wholeheartedly. And this is what Imam Ghazali did and what all the Muslims did at that time. And that's why they were so successful. We thank